on the run. Here's them calling you and me. Every son of liberty. Hurry right away, no delay, go today. Make your daddy glad to have had such a lad. By the end of 1918, German aviation was totally destroyed. All the planes and factories, along with the industrial capabilities. Do you feel a passion for this lost period of aviation? Our goal is to bring it back to life. Do you want to get involved? Why not consider joining up with us and become Pokernuts? Yasta 6, early morning in November of 1918. The brand new Poker Fighter gets ready for combat. Der Hauptmann kommt! Achtung! Morgen, Herr Hauptmann! Melde, Kuckuck aufmunitioniert und vollgetankt. Danke, Hans! Getting dressed in many layers of clothing helps the pilot to be protected against the cold at altitude. Strapping into the narrow cockpit, he merges into the plane, becoming a fighting machine of war. Nochmal! Is this what you thought it would be? Do you place yourself in that time frame? If so, you can make it happen. So why don't you? We know that building an airplane is a combination of many skills each taken in small steps. Every journey begins with the first step, and building a vintage airplane is no different from that journey. Most of the skills required are those of the major handcrafting professions common at the beginning of the 20th century. Converting line drawings into real aircraft parts is a skill that very few people have these days, and the same goes for many other trades of the period. Carpentry, sheet metal work, welding, brazing, wire splicing, metal turning, leather work, fabric work, tube bending, electrical wiring, oil systems, fuel systems, engine fitting, airframe rigging, engineering, testing. And this does not even account for historical research, reverse engineering, material testing, certification. Are you a jack of all trades? We thought not. So we can help you with research, drawings, workshop space and guidance on certification amongst many other things. Our goal is helping others to make their dream come true. Why do we do this? Well, because we want to see World War I aircraft return to the skies where they belong. In the end, there will be, however, a nice vintage aeroplane. A piece that keeps history alive. Here are some period photographs and documents of the aircraft currently in production or completed. All aircraft are built according to the historic data currently available to us via our own research and assistance from others. The aircraft are built using original methods and materials and are as authentic as possible. Using this developmental approach we can achieve full flight certification as appropriate under German aviation law. 
Aircraft built for certification in Germany are subjected to a rigid criteria under the rules of the German Civil Aviation Authority, which is a full member of the ICAO agreement. Each certifiable aircraft must have a named individual who is responsible, according to German Civil Aviation law. Since these are considered experimental aircraft, they have to undergo comprehensive, predefined static load and operational flying tests before certification is granted. Now we can show you some details on each of the projects. As there are no original E1, E2 or E3 drawings available to us, we created new drawings based on the detailed measurements of the last original aircraft in the Science Museum in London. Many other sources were used, particularly the captured aircraft records from both France and Britain. Here are a few images showing completed components. Understanding this key aircraft allows us to re-engineer all Fokker models up to and including the M22. As mentioned earlier, static load tests are carried out on assemblies as shown. All the components are brought together to complete the aeroplane. Completion also includes the required paperwork for certification. I built my first triplane at the age of 17. This plane is still on display at the Technic Museum at Spire on the Rhine. The Fokker triplane DR1 of 1917 is one of the most well-known aeroplanes of World War I. It hooked many young people to early aviation, including myself, Achim Engels. In order to build that plane, a huge amount of effort was put into the collection of historic data, including factory drawings, factory photographs, official type test documents, etc. Based on this, a new set of drawings was created, which was used for the first example of a triplane that I built. Subsequent research has resulted in many changes in the drawings. A number of new triplanes are currently being constructed around the world. One of these at my place and will stay with the museum to be. The Rumpler C4 is a highly thought of aircraft and was one of the best two-seaters of the period. First available in September 1916, it soon proved a stable, strategic platform for observation. Based on detailed measurements of aircraft components, a new set of drawings is being created. A start on the wings has been made by laying out and building the ribs. It is proposed that one of these aircraft will be retained by the museum. The Pilots D3 is in the research stage. The approach is the same as with any other project. Based on the available historical data and measurements of original items, new drawings are created that will be used in the production process. Although this plane is not on the top of the priority list, some items have already been made, such as a set of rudders for the projects and one for display. Recently, one more Pilots D3 project joined in. This airplane will be built by the customer at our place, under our supervision, and fully supported from research to production methods. For the certification of this project, he will be fully responsible himself, as pointed out earlier in this video. He started by working on the wing ribs. Of course, at the same time, our ribs will be created. The D7 had a great reputation as a good all-round aircraft, it matched or exceeded anything the Entente could throw at it. The aircraft enjoyed a relatively long and extensive service career, with almost 4,000 being produced during the war period. Research and new drawings were created, this being the normal approach for all projects. One challenge in building an aircraft powered by an inline engine is making the radiators. 
This is not a skill that many people have today. Wing assembly brings together the spars and ribs to form the overall structure. Fitting the wings to the fuselage is a milestone for the project, but it is not the end. A full static load test was being carried out on the fuselage and tailplane. This is to meet the Civil Aviation Authority's test criteria and to allow Arhim's aircraft to be certified in the aerobatic class. The Fokker C1 was designed during the end of 1918 from a standard D7. It was further modified into the configuration of a normal two-seat observation aircraft. A major innovation is the use of an undercarriage fuel tank. Our reproduction drawings are based on the post-war Fokker drawings. While the aircraft was never used during World War I, it did form the basis for post-war production and sales. One of the aircraft is being built by a customer in-house but as a low priority project. However, all the wing ribs for all aircraft have been completed. Aircraft development has come full circle back to the monoplanes of the early days. Many design features of the D8 can be traced back to the early Fokker models as he developed his approach to a simple, robust and effective aircraft. Components such as clamps and fittings were used in aircraft from the Spyder of 1912 right to the post-war aircraft. The methods used then are still practical and efficient today. Key innovations were the use of a plywood covered wing developed in the V1. Also, the thick wing section which allowed for a cantilever construction, thus reducing bracing wires and struts, eliminating additional drag. The wing is stained, initially very bright, but fades rapidly when exposed to the sunlight. Even varnish doesn't reduce this fading. The fabric we had remanufactured for our D8 is of the pre-printed camouflage aircraft type issued in 1980. While the aircraft did not have an opportunity to test its metal in combat, it was highly regarded. Many of the design elements are evident in the modern aircraft of today. There is in all of us a dream. Some of us will strive to achieve this dream and along the way fight to make sure that it becomes real. Others see it only as a dream. Ahim's dream is to see a living, working World War I aircraft factory and airfield as a museum, a time machine, where we can be transported back to the 1912 to 1920 period. The museum will cover all aspects of life at the time. It will provide customers with a fully capable working environment where original methods and materials come together to create an aircraft and maybe any number of other objects of the same time frame. All the work shown so far goes towards this dream, but there is so much more to do. The museum will allow visitors of all ages to become involved in some hands-on activity. The objectives of the museum are to make authentic, fully certifiable reproductions fly, to research all aspects of the technology of the period, to create new drawings for production, to build aircraft parts for both static and flying displays, to provide a centre of excellence in the vintage aircraft production and restoration, to provide an historic archive, to provide hands-on assistance to many other home builders, and to provide home builders guidance through the certification process. In short, we want to work on them, to fly them, and to breathe the spirit of that period. You can join us in this adventure, but we'll talk more about that later. To make this dream come true, a lot of resource material has already been collated, but we recognise that there is more out there, somewhere. We have in the archive a number of original and period drawings, 
showing the buildings of both Schwerin Gurius and Lake Schwerin sites. The simplicity of the Fokker approach will allow a full reconstruction at all levels, compared to a more complex factory arrangement such as Albatross or LVG. These drawings have been used to create a virtual world to enable us to visualise the whole airfield complex. The making of the models has illustrated the strength and simplicity of the buildings. Recreating these buildings today should present no technical problems at all. The 3D models serve two purposes, one for the visualisation of the museum and second for insertion into a flight simulator. 3D modelling aids the research and development of drawings in particular as any issues or unclear elements around the engineering can be explored with little cost before any actual metal is cut and potentially wasted. Here is a virtual model of the Fokker V1. It is still a work in progress, but it does give a real idea as to how 3D can help engineering, particularly when there is a lack of historic drawings. So what do we need your help with? A museum location, suitably sized to accommodate the airfield and its buildings. This must have unrestricted airspace. Recreating the buildings. Achieving civil approvals. And of course, funding. Can you help with any of these things? If so, we'd love to hear from you. Our contact details are Achim Engels, Engels Aeroplan Bo, Remstrasse 22, 73614, Schondorf, Germany, www.fokker-team.de or you can contact on the email engels at fokker-team-schondorf.de You can also help by becoming one of the Fokker Nuts. Join our core team to help take the dream forward. Visit our website to find out how you can join and to see more about what we are doing. This is being Sverin Gurius. Schwerin Gurius. Do you place yourself bleh? Engels Aeropan Blow? Silence! Have an opportunity. An opportunity. An opportunity. An opportunity. We have in the archive a number of original Crazy fellow. showing the buildings of the Schwerin Gurius. Go. Okay. Listen, we've got a coming plan. First comes one, then comes two, and finally we'll be at the end, which is here. Thank you for listening.